Hello all, David Williams with Jesus Ministries. We're getting into Romans chapter 16. And it's our last chapter in our home Bible study series in the book of Romans. And we'll pick up the next, in the next book, we'll seek God and see what it is that he wants us to study next. Uh, we're probably going to go through a gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, which are obviously a lot longer, but we really want to get these messages out as frequently as possible because Jesus Christ is returning, and we want to be as prepared for that as he gives us the grace to be. So we're going to pick up in Romans chapter 16, verses 1 through 27. Hopefully, you'll have a pen and paper available. If not, you have the, vi the video, the message, to go back through so that you can re-examine the information so that you can do it. We should study God's word so that we can, we can do God's word, obey God's word, and receive the benefits first and foremost of his presence. And that's the first benefit of studying God's word, knowing who God is and engaging with his presence. And the second benefit, the second benefit is receiving what the Father has for us. For us. First benefit, being with God. Second benefit is getting from God what we need. Verse 1, I commend, this is Paul. He's saluting the Roman church. He says, I commend or commit to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church, which is at Sancria, which is near Corinth, apparently, that you receive her in the Lord as becomes saints, or as is appropriate for saints to do. So he's, he's charging them to embrace this sister who's traveling from wherever he is to where she, to where they are, all right, in Sancria. And he says that you, that you receive her, or, well, specifically, she's a servant of the church which is, which is near Corinth and he's sending her or she's trans she, she's 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 leaving Sancria and going to this church in Rome and Paul says it's appropriate for saints to receive this sister who comes with commendation with a good report good reputation he says and that you assist her in whatsoever business she is in need of you for she has become a succor or a nurturer a nourisher a supporter of many and of myself also. It doesn't specify what those duties are, but it does let us know that she is she's a part of, of the church, and so she should be received as such. All right, so um, we'll pick up in verse 3 there. Greet Priscilla, which is a female, and Aquila, which is the male, husband and wife, uh, he says, my helpers in Christ Jesus. We know that Priscilla is a sister. Now, I want to talk about just briefly uh, how he, he's talking about these sisters in the body of Christ who are active. And this, this lets us know that it is important for men and women to be active in the body of Christ in the capacities that God has anointed them for. And so it's a blessing that Paul is letting us know that that's appropriate and that that's what saints of God should be about and should be doing. Taking care of one another, saluting one another, embracing one another, supporting one another in the body of Christ, male or female, according to the anointing and the call of God on their lives. Verse 4, he says, who have, lay, who have for my life laid down their own necks, meaning they endangered and jeopardized their own life, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles, the non-Jewish Nations likewise greet the church that is in their house. So Priscilla and Aquila, husband and wife, they pastored a group of people. They're people that don't believe that men and that a man and his wife should be over and manage a body of believers in Christ Jesus. But it's clear that they were partners in the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's beyond question when you look at this verse here. So sometimes a church may be pastored by a body of elders. Sometimes it'll be by a man and a woman. Sometimes it'll be by a, a single individual. The church is growing. Churches are growing, hopefully. And so leadership will take on different looks. It'll take on different structures at different times in a ministry's existence, in a church's existence, until, of course, God does something different. So he says in verse 5, likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus, 
you paint us, who is uh, is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ, meaning he's one of the first believers in this city or nation of Achaia to Christ. But as a matter of fact, let's, let's look at what Achaia is. Let's just look at that. Uh, it's uh, Achaia, it's defined as the, the name originally of a narrow strip of territory in Greece in the northwest of the Peloponnesus, Peloponnesus okay? Subsequently, it was applied by the Romans in this area. So it's an area near, or was an area near Greece. And so he says to salute him, who was one of the first believers in that area. He says, greet Mary, who bestowed on us much labor. Okay, salute Andronicus and Junia, another female there, Junia, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles. So the apostles... He's either A, calling them among those who go and start churches, or he's saying that the apostles, they recognize these two. Either way, it's important that Paul in this little bit is mentioning both men and women as having responsibility to either financially or spiritually support the expansion of God's kingdom. He says they were in Christ before he was, Andronicus and Junia. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, uh, our helper in Christ. And Stachys, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved or blessed, supported, established in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. And salute Herodian, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Uh, salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who is... Uh, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, much, who, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, and mine. Uh, Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brothers which are with them. Salute Philologus, and Julia, perhaps another female, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. So this is important because we understand that when we talk about the type of fellowship that God wants us in the body of Christ to have, he does want the church of God to be comprised of the spiritual and the natural elements. We, we learn in Acts chapter 2 that the very first church, it, 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 it was structured in that they continued steadfastly, consistently in the apostles' Doctrine in eating together, breaking of bread, in fellowship, that was communion, all right, whatever kind of communion that was, not necessarily just the communion, but in fellowship, and then in prayers. So there were spiritual and natural dimensions of the church of Jesus Christ. So we can't talk about loving God, whom we can't see, yet we ignore or despise our brothers in the faith whom we do see. Verse 17, now I beseech you brothers, mark or indicate, expose them. So while he's blessing those who are supporters of the kingdom of God and fellow members of the body of Christ, he also says to indicate those who are not, but are in the church world. He says, now I beseech you, I'm begging you brothers, mark them, indicate them, Point them out who cause divisions and offenses, who separate people in the body of Christ from each other, and who hurt people's faith because of the things that they say or do. He says, identify and indicate those who divide the body of Christ and offend their faith. He says, uh, who cause their faith to be offended, contrary to the doctrine which you've learned and avoid them. He's saying identify them and avoid them. He doesn't ju just say pray for them. He says identify who they are and separate from their company. He says in verse 18, for they that are such, they that do these things, they that do things that contradict the faith that Jesus Christ told us to uphold and to walk with and to wor walk in, he says, for they that do such things, do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of what they may say of themselves. So it's not about what you or I say of ourselves. It's about what you or I do. 
It's about what you or I do, how our, what our works are doing. He said, they that are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own desire, their own belly, their own, their own passions, and by their good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple, of those who lack the knowledge of God. So there are those among us who lack the knowledge of God and they are sitting ducks for people who are coming in and who are going to offend, who are going to teach things contrary to what Jesus taught, who are going to bring separations in the body of Christ contrary to what Jesus Christ taught. Verse 19, for your, the true church in Rome, your obedience has come abroad, meaning it's been publicly known about how faithful you guys are in Christ Jesus. Uh, he says, your obedience has come abroad to all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple. I don't want you to be really when he says simple concerning evil, he's not saying he doesn't want them to know that there are evil people. Obviously, he's identified. He's saying he doesn't want them to know the things that they shouldn't know. He doesn't want them to believe things that they shouldn't believe. He doesn't want them to be scholars on things that would damn them. He wants them to be scholars in the spirit it, based on things that, that would allow them to come into contact with the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 20, and the God of peace, and this is what God will do, and the God of peace, and this is him, this is him encouraging them, and the God of peace will bruise, damage, injure Satan under your feet shortly. So he's promising the church of Rome that the spirit of God is going to harm the devil, his efforts, and those who support the devil's work and kingdom under the feet of the believers. The Lord is going to use the believers to destroy the kingdom of the enemy. Verse, uh, continuing in verse 20, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius, Jesus, Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you. So maybe Paul was speaking and Tertius was actually doing the transcribing of the information. Gaius, my host, and of the whole church, salute you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, salutes you. And Quartus, a brother, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And now he's about to speak a blessing over this church, which is important for the men of God to do. Now to him that is of power, who ha he has authority, he has strength to stabilize you. Now to him that is of power to stabilize, to establish you according to my good news. What's the good news? that the Father sent the Son to die on the cross for the sins of mankind, to resurrect the third day, and to ascend into to heaven, and who's coming again to get those whom he loves and to judge those who despise the Father. Now to him that is of power to establish or stabilize you, according to my good news and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation, the revealing, the unveiling of the mystery. What's the mystery? The mystery is that God became a man. He says, which was kept secret since the world began. What was kept secret since the world began? That God would become a man, but is now made manifest. What, what is now made manifest? That God became a man. Okay. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment, and, and what prophets? Who prophesied that? Moses prophesied that. Jacob, when he was dying, prophesied that. Talked about Shiloh coming. We know that the prophets prophesied the coming. David who was a prophet, prophesied that Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, all of them spoke of the Messiah and his becoming, his coming to earth. God became a man. But now, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations. So why ought the gospel be preached to all nations? So that they would be obedient to the faith. What's faith? Awareness of God and his promises. To the only wise God be glory. And this is, he ends it off with a praise. To the only wise God be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God for his giving of his word. And so that's it. We're, we're done with the book of Romans. We are, uh, we're complete with, uh, with, with examining it during this season, God willing. In the future, we'll go through it again. 
but there's so many other things that the spirit of god would have us to study before he comes back.